Welcome to lesson three. In this lesson, we're going to continue with chapter one, dealing with errors and asking for help. Now you can also follow along with the course textbook, which you can read for free online at inventwithpython.com beyond. Now there is a certain etiquette to efficiently asking for uh, programming advice. If experienced software developers are willing to answer your questions at no charge, it's best to make efficient use of their time. Because asking strangers for programming help should always be a last resort. There could be hours or days between your question and someone's reply to your question, if you get a reply at all. It's much faster to search the web for other people who have already had your question and read the answers that they received. Uh, this is why online documentation and search engines were made. Because otherwise this work has to be done by very slow humans. But when you've exhausted all of your options and you have to ask a human audience your programming question, avoid the following common mistakes. Asking if it's okay to ask a question instead of just asking it. Implying your question instead of asking it directly. Asking your question on the wrong forum or website. Writing an unspecific post headline or email subject such as, I have a problem or please help. Uh, saying my program doesn't work, but not explaining how you want it to work. Uh, not including the full error message, not sharing your code, sharing poorly formatted code, and not explaining what you've already tried, and not giving operating system or version information. And last, uh, don't ask someone to write a program for you. Now we'll go into all of these in detail right now. First, don't ask to ask a question if you're writing an email or posting to an, to an online forum. This is something that's really polite to do if you're asking someone in person just to make sure that they have time to reply, but there's a certain lag or delay between posting your question or emailing your question and then getting a response from it. So you really want to cut down on the amount of back and forth. And the best way to do that is to simply just ask the question outright. Next, you want to state your question in the form of an actual question. It's, it's easy to assume that your helpers know what you're talking about, but programming is a pretty wide field and they might not have experience in the particular area that you're having trouble. So be sure to state your question in the form of an actual question. You might end up saying something like, I want to do such and such, or the code isn't working, and that can imply what your question is, but be sure to include explicit questions. Literally, the sentences that you write should end with a question mark. Otherwise, it's probably unclear what exactly you're asking. Next, you want to ask your question on the appropriate website. So if you have a Python question, you don't want to post that to a JavaScript forum. A lot of mailing lists or forums will have frequently asked question or FAQ documents, and these will explain what are, what are the appropriate topics to discuss. One problem that happens a lot is with the Python dev mailing list. Uh, this is for developers of the Python language itself, the design of the Python language. It's not a mailing list for people's general Python questions, but a lot of people end up finding this mailing list and then posting questions like, yeah, how do you convert a string to an int or something like that in Python? And that's not really an appropriate place to discuss those sorts of questions. Next, you really want to summarize what your question is in the headline or the email subject. Uh, it's really common to just post something like, please help me, or a generic question like, why isn't this working? And the problem with that is, there are probably lots of people doing that, and it can be really hard to find your problem or refind your problem if the headlines or the email subject lines don't actually describe the problem that you're having. Next, you need to say what exactly it is you want your program to do. Uh, it's not always obvious to your helper. Uh, they don't know what your intention is. And even if your question is just, why am I getting this error? It also helps to say what your program's end goal is. Because in some cases, your helper can tell you that you need an entirely different approach and you can abandon your current problem rather than wasting time trying to solve it. Now, this is a really important one. We talked about error messages in a previous lesson. Be sure to copy and paste the entire error message, including the traceback. You don't want to just describe your error, such as like, 
I'm getting an out of range error. That, that doesn't really provide enough detail for your helper to figure out what's going wrong. Also, you always want to specify if you always encounter this error or if it's an intermittent problem. Sometimes it happens and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, if you can figure out what are the cases that it does happen and when it doesn't happen, be sure to give those details too. Next, you should share your complete code. So along with the full error message and traceback, you should provide the source code for your entire program. That way, the helper can run your program on their machine under a debugger and examine what's going on. Uh, what you should really aim to achieve is sending them a minimum, complete, and reproducible example. This is called an MCR example. Uh, this term comes from the website Stack Overflow, and you can check out a webpage, stackoverflow.com slash help slash MCVE. And what this means is that minimal is the smallest amount of code that can reproduce the exact problem that you're having. Uh, complete means that the code example that you send contains everything it needs to reproduce the problem. And reproducible means that your code example reliably reproduces the problem you're describing. If you just sort of vaguely describe your code, or maybe you just share some of your code but not all of it, that's going to really get in the way of your helper being able to figure out what's going wrong. Be sure that your code has proper formatting when you share it. Oftentimes, if you copy and paste your code into an email client, it could end up mangling or getting rid of the spacing or indentation at the beginning. Your Python code could end up looking something like this, where all the spaces at the front are removed. And this really gets in the way of your helper then being able to copy and paste this code and run it themselves, because then they have to reintroduce all this spacing. And if your problem was that it had incorrect spacing, then that's going to be impossible to figure out from this code. Now, if you have a lot of code that you need to share, it might just be easier to, to go to a website such as pastebin.com and then copy and paste the code directly here and then share the link that Pastebin gives you. This is really good when you're posting to online forums where you can't attach your source code files directly. Next, tell your helper what you've already tried. So when you're posting your question, you really want to give as much information about what you've already done. Not only does this rule out certain possible problems that it could be, but it also shows your helper that you've at least put some effort into trying to figure out your own problem before you've asked them to use their time to help you. And next, this might not always be relevant, but go ahead and give this information anyway. Tell your helper what operating system you're using and also what version of the operating system and also what version of Python you're using. There are some problems that happen only in Python 2 but not in Python 3, or perhaps there are some problems that only happen on Mac and not Windows. So it might be a small detail, but always give this information to your helper as well. And finally, don't ask someone to write a program for you. Unfortunately, it's really common for, say, computer science students to ask online strangers to do their homework for them, or maybe there's an entrepreneur who has an idea for a cool app and they just need to find someone to write this short little program for them, of course, for free. Uh, programming help forums weren't made for this purpose. So here's an example of a question that I've posted to the website Stack Overflow. Com. Uh, here's the headline for it. Notice that it is very specific. I'm asking about the Selenium web driver. Specifically, how do I find all of an element's attributes? And I've emphasized all because I don't want to just find some of them. I want to find all of them. And also, this is a question. It ends with a question mark. And here I describe what my problem is and how there's some code that does something like what I want to do, but it doesn't exactly do everything I want. So I then say my question is, how can I get a list of all of the attributes that this element has? I offer some suggestions where I thought like, well, maybe it was get attributes or get attribute names or something like that. And then also I give the version information of the Selenium module that I'm trying this out on. So this is an example of a good programming question, if I say so myself. Now about this website, Stack Overflow. This is a really popular website 
for answering programming questions, but a lot of new programmers express a certain frustration or even intimidation about using it because the Stack Overflow moderators kind of have a reputation for ruthlessly closing question posts that don't meet their strict guidelines for what kinds of questions you can ask. But there's a good reason that Stack Overflow runs such a tight ship like this. So Stack Overflow isn't intended to answer questions so much as to build an archive of programming questions matched with their answers. So accordingly, they want questions that are specific and unique and not opinion-based. Questions need to be detailed and well-stated so that search engine users can easily find them. Now, if there's 30 entries for the same question asked 30 times, not only is that going to duplicate the answering efforts of the site's volunteer experts, but it's also going to confuse search engine users with multiple results. Uh, questions need to have concrete, objective answers. So asking something like, uh, what is the best programming language? That's, that's a matter of opinion, and that's just going to cause needless argument and waste people's time. And besides, we already know that Python is the best programming language. Being in a position of needing help and requesting help only to have your question promptly closed can be really hurtful and kind of embarrassing. My advice to that is to first review all the advice that I give in this lesson and also read Stack Overflow's How Do I Ask a Good Question Guide. And you can find this on their website at stackoverflow.com slash help slash how to ask. There's a lot of good advice specifically for the Stack Overflow website here. And second, feel free to use a pseudonym if you're afraid of asking dumb questions. Stack Overflow doesn't require you to give them your real name. For example, I have my account under my real name, but I also have another account when I have the occasional question that I feel might be really silly or, or foolish sounding if I, if I ask it. You don't have to use your real name if you're uncomfortable using it. And finally, if you prefer a more casual place to ask more vaguely worded questions about programming, feel free to visit some of these subreddits such as Learn Python or Learn Programming. These forums tend to be much more lax about which questions they accept, but still be sure to read their FAQ, which is listed in the sidebar. Now that finishes it for chapter one of the course textbook. In the next lesson, we'll begin on chapter two, uh, environment setup and dealing with the command line.